So I am going to show you something absolutely insane. If you know me, you know that I get pretty upset that in school, we are taught very little about real life finances. For example, are we taught anything about FICO and our credit and how to boost it, how to maintain it? We are taught nothing. Well, the other thing we're not taught is exactly what I'm gonna show you today, and that is how you can pay off a $200,000 30-year mortgage a $30,000 car, and $12,000 worth of credit card debt in around five to seven years, even if you just started that mortgage yesterday. And I'm gonna show you how to do this while only making $60,000 a year and still having all your other bills you have to pay every month, okay? And I'm gonna show you this absolutely free because we should have been taught this in school and we weren't. So today, I wanna pay it forward, okay? You ready? how to become completely debt-free in five to seven years. Okay, this is an example of an average family across the US. Uh, we'll say this family's making $60,000 a year. So uh, in other words, five to seven, or I'm sorry, $5,000 uh, a month. Okay, uh, so $60,000, 5K a month that you bring in in income. Okay, you have a $200,000 mortgage, $200,000 mortgage, and we have a $30,000 car and those are what's or car loan and those are what's known as amortized loans so those loans are fixed for the most part the the monthly payments are always going to be the same uh, you can only put uh, money in you can't take money out okay uh, over here we have a line of credit or a credit card okay 15k line of credit twelve thousand dollars that we've already put on there maybe we had some tough time and all of a sudden um, you know, needed to use our credit card. We have $12,000 that we've already used on our $15,000 credit card, okay? And let's say the APR, the, the percentage rate, the, the interest rate is 21%, okay? Maybe because our credit's kind of poor, maybe we have a, a high uh, interest rate on our credit card. Now, let's say the house is at a 5% interest rate and the car is at zero. Maybe we, we hit some introductory, you know, five years or 60 month, 0% APR, okay? So we're not paying any interest on the car. Uh, we're paying 5% on the mortgage. Now here, see this big circle here? That is our checking and savings accounts. And now we have our expenses, okay? So we have $5,000 coming in. We have our expenses. We have our $1,200 mortgage payment. We have our $600 monthly credit card. That's our minimum uh, payment on our credit card to start paying down our balance. We have a $600 car payment, and then we have $1,200 for everything else. Internet, phone, cable, groceries, water, electricity, all of that. We're gonna call those miscellaneous things, okay? Now, what do most families have? You have our checking account, and you have our savings account, right? So you have $5,000 coming in in income, goes straight into our checking account. Now, most of us have this employee mentality. Here's what that looks like. Now. You're paid $5,000, okay? That goes where? Your checking account. And now out of that, you have your expenses. So again, 1,200 mortgage, 600 credit card, 600 car, 1,200 miscellaneous. That leaves $1,400, that all equals 3,600 in expenses, which means $1,400, what are we taught to do with that? 5,000 in, 3,600 out in expenses. Most people have the employee mentality, which is, Anything you have left at the end of the month, what do you do with it? You put it in savings, right? Save it for emergencies. That's what we've always been taught to do. So because of that, now you have $5,000 in and $5,000 out, which means a $0 cash flow. That's the special word that we're looking for in all of this, cash flow. That is the employee mentality, okay? The wealthy look at this very differently. They see this whole board here and they look at it very differently. Okay, they look at how can I make it to where I can maximize cash flow, where I can at the end of the month still have positive cash flow. This is how most people live. They don't have any discretionary money at the end of the month. So we're gonna shift our thinking a little bit and we're gonna create some positive cash flow. And we're going to do this by maximizing this, our line of credit, okay? so. Here's what we're gonna do. As soon as we get our paycheck into our checking account, as soon as we get our $5,000, we are going to transfer it over 
to our line of credit or credit card. Stick with me here. Now, what, is, what does that do? Because we just paid that credit card down $5,000, it takes care of that minimum payment that uh, you had to pay this month, right? It, it now frees up that $600 credit card. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to cross off that $600 credit card because now we don't have that as an expense. We've taken care of that because we've, we've put $5,000 on our card, right? We actually paid 5K, which satisfies the monthly payment, right? Now you don't have that $600 credit card. That adds $600 to your cash flow, okay? Then, here's what we're gonna do next here, and you're gonna think I'm crazy. We are going to not save, okay? That's right, you heard me correctly. We are going to not put that $1,400 into savings because we can maximize our strategy because if this money is sitting here and not over here, right? We're paying 21% over here on our line of credit. If we're not making 21% over here on our money, it doesn't make sense to keep it there. Okay, so now we have $2,000, that 600 from the credit cards, 1,400 that you would have put in your savings. You have $2,000 in positive monthly cash flow. Okay, so here's what this looks like. Here's what we're gonna do. Now we've got our $15,000 limit, okay? On our card, we've got our $15,000 limit and we've got our $12,000 balance. Okay, now month one, what are we gonna do? We're gonna take our $5,000, put it in checking, immediately transfer it over to our line of credit, which means our $12,000 line of credit or, or balance just dropped to what? 7,000, okay? Because we're still uh, paying our uh, miscellaneous uh, expenses, our car payment, our mortgage, what's it gonna do? We're gonna do all of a sudden put back $3,000, 1,200 plus six plus 12. What is that, 3,000? We're gonna pay our expenses out of our line of credit. Our line of credit, in, in essence, now becomes our new checking account, right? We've put 5,000 in there, lowered it to 7,000. Now we're paying our monthly expenses and it brings it up to 10,000, okay? Now I already hear people saying, wait a second, you can't pay your mortgage and your car payment with a credit card, guess what, you can. You can get lines of credit and or credit cards with banks to where you can make car payments and mortgages, mortgage payments, using your credit card, they are out there, okay? Your credit card probably will give you convenience checks, whatever credit card you have right now to use, okay? This works. That's month one, right? We've got it to 10,000. Month two, down by five, up by three, you're at 8,000. Down, down by five, up by three, down by five, up by three. What will end up happening here, it'll take about five months to pay off your credit card. Now, had you done it the way your bank wanted you to do it, it would have taken you four years and you would have paid thousands of dollars in interest, okay? Had you just done it the way the credit card company wanted you to do it or your bank wanted you to do it, $600 to this, it would have taken four years to do that and you would have paid thousands of dollars in interest. With this way, it took you what? Five, five, six months at the most? Probably around five, okay? But now guess what, we have a problem. Because we're still making $2,000 worth of positive cash flow, and we have no place to put it because we've paid off our card. So we're gonna do what we call chunking. We are going to chunk the mortgage, okay? We're gonna pull $13,000, let me get my pen here. We're gonna pull $13,000 from our line of credit. Okay? We're gonna pull $13,000 from our line of credit rather than the 12 that we had on there before. We're gonna pull $13,000, which will leave us, what's 200 minus 13? 187,000. So what we're doing is we're taking, 30, now that we've paid off our credit card, we're gonna take 13,000 off of it, which now our balance is gonna go back up to 13,000, right? we're paying down the principal of our mortgage. So rather than this being at 200,000, it's now at 187,000. Now, it's actually a little bit less than that because uh, you know, meanwhile, these, these six months over here that we've been paying our mortgage out of our line of credit, right? 
Well, part of that, we're going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit here, but part of that is our principle of our, of our uh, uh, mortgage. So this is actually down a little bit. We'll talk, we'll talk more about that, but at least it'll be down to 187000 Now, Now, keep in mind, what that means, though, is that we've got $187,000 on our mortgage, $13,000 on a line of credit. We still have $200,000 worth of debt, okay? We still have $200,000 worth of uh, debt, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to do exactly the same thing again that we did over here. $13,000, let's just pretend this is $13,000, bring it down five, that means eight, bring it up to 11. Down five, up three, down five, down up three, down five, up three, et cetera. After about six months, that is going to be paid off again. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to chunk the mortgage. We're going to take another $13,000 off of our line of credit and stick it on our mortgage. Now, all of a sudden, we owe $174,000 on our mortgage and $13,000 on our line of credit. Only about 10, 11, 12 months after we had started this initial routine. Okay, and then we're going to do that again and again and again and again. And what happens is after about five, five and a half years, this entire mortgage is paid for. It is gone. The car, the $30,000 car is paid for because the note of the car, the loan was five years. Remember, you didn't have any interest payments. It was 60 months, excuse me, 60 months, uh, same as cash. So over the course of those five years that you paid off your mortgage, guess what? You paid off your car payment as well because you've been moving your, your payments from your line of credit, paying your mortgage, moving your line of, or moving, uh, uh, paying your car payment out of your line of credit. You've paid down that $30,000 car. Okay? Five years, five and a half years, you've paid off your mortgage. You've paid off your car payment. Okay? Well, guess what? What does that mean? you now no longer have those payments. Well, what does that mean? All of a sudden, that 2,000, now, what did we take? 1,800 more? Sorry, I'm writing sideways. So all of a sudden, that brings $1,200 and $600 for the car payment and the mortgage for a total now of how much cash flow do you have after five years, now every month you've got $3,800 worth of cash flow that you can use. Now you're sitting there thinking, wait a second, he just talked really fast and I love what I'm hearing, but what kind of black magic is this, okay? It is not. Now I'm going to write something on the board, okay? I'm gonna write five degrees Celsius And I'm going to write 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry for the sloppy handwriting. 5 degrees Celsius, 21 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So remember those 5 and 21? We've got a 5% interest rate on our mortgage, or had it. <laughs> now we've paid it off, so we don't have it. But we had 5% 5, 5 interest rate on here. We had a 21% interest rate over here, okay? And I want to just recap for a second. So five, five and a half years, you've, got, you've now got $200,000 in equity on your house, maybe more depending on the housing market. You have a car that's paid for. You have a credit card, a line of credit that is completely paid off, a credit card that's completely paid off. And now you've got $3,800 a month that you can use, okay? So let's go back to these numbers. Five degrees Celsius, 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Now tell me, which one is hotter? five degrees Celsius or 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Why did you say that five degrees Celsius is hotter than 21 degrees Fahrenheit? Five is less than 21, right? We learned that in school, at least. But something we were also taught in school is that these, Celsius and Fahrenheit, are two very different units of measure. Well, guess what? The banks have done the same thing. They didn't teach this, that uh, that there's a, a difference between amortized one directional interest and simple interest. Amortized one directional interest, simple interest, okay, which is revolving. So what does that mean? Simple interest revolving. It means once you paid this $600, so let's say that your limit was 15000 
And let's actually say that your balance was fifteen thousand. You've maxed out your credit card. Well, once you pay down six hundred dollars, you're at fourteen thousand four hundred, right? So what happens there? Why is this called simple interest revolving? It means once you paid that six hundred dollars for that month, you can go to the gas station, to the grocery store, to a restaurant, and you can swipe the card and you can then utilize that money again, okay? But once you pay over here on your loan, that is one directional. Can you utilize that money again? Can you swipe a mortgage card at the gas station or the grocery store, etc.? No, 100% of your money is gone through a loan, while only 21% of your money over here is gone in your line of credit, which means you can utilize that money again. 79% of this money in your line of credit, you can utilize. So which one is the better lending instrument, right? Okay, so let's look at the actual numbers. Even for just the first time we do this, what do the actual numbers look like? Even for just the six month batch, let's, let's look at the actual numbers uh, for, for how this actually did, okay? Let's say we got our $200,000 mortgage on August 1st, 2018, okay? And here are our first six monthly payments, okay? We're gonna compare the, the, the two strategies. Let's compare the bank's way, which is this board here, the bank's way, the traditional route of paying your mortgage continuously for 30 years, and the smart route that we're discussing on this video, okay? So this is what the first six months of your amortized 30-year loan looks like. Now, now, just a, a little bit of background here. In the first 10 years, uh, first 10 to 15 years of a mortgage, that is where the banks make almost all of their money, the first 10 to 15 years of a mortgage. Why? Because even though you're paying only 5% interest, you're starting with a $200,000 balance, right? You're starting with a $200,000 loan. So in year one, you're paying 5% of that $200. $200,000, I should say. What is that? It's around $10,000 in the first year of only interest. Of only interest. Look at how much you're paying off on the principal. Check this out. First month. Here's your first mortgage payment, right? You're paying around $1,073 and some change. $1,073 and some change. That's not including uh, taxes and insurance, obviously. But $1,073 and some change on the actual interest in principal. Look at how much of that is interest. Look at how much of that is principal. Which means every single month, look at how little the balance is going down. Okay, you see that? So, so after six months of paying your mortgage, what have you paid your house down to? $198,543.06. But you've paid $4,984.90 in interest you've only paid off $1,400, $1,456 worth of your principal, okay? That's the traditional route. That is the traditional route, okay? So let's look at our new smart way. What is the smart way to do this, okay? Same months, August 2018, you have your credit card that has a 15K limit, you have a 12K balance already on there, and you do your first transfer of your monthly income from your checking account to your line of credit, okay? So month one, we added our 5,000. That brings our balance to 7,000. We pay our expenses, 3,000. That brings our balance up to $10,000. Now here's what I wanna talk about, is in that month, by doing this, this uh, line of credit, okay? Even if we had a, a $10,000 balance that entire month, which isn't going to be the case, right? Because you're not paying your expenses for the whole month on the first or at the beginning of the month when you first pay 5,000 or put $5,000 onto the card. You're doing it over the course of the month. But let's just say worst case scenario, you, have, you still have a $10,000 balance on your line of credit all month long. The amount of interest, even though it's 21%, the amount of interest that you're going to pay on that $10,000 is only $173 in interest. All right, your balance is now 10,000. What do you do the following month? You put five in, brings your balance to five. You pay your expenses, brings your balance to eight. You then pay your five, balance is three, pay your expenses, your balance is six. November, same thing, 
all of a sudden your balance is four. Now here's, here's the issue. We're, we're at the end of month four, right? Well, if you, you, you can't put, if you only have $4,000 balance on your line of credit, you can't pay 5,000. You can't put your whole $5,000, uh, you know, check onto your credit card. You did this in four months, right? At the end of four months, you all of a sudden have your line of credit paid off. Okay. So what do we do? We put four on there. We're going to leave a thousand checking just temporarily. We're going to put four on there, pay it off to zero. So now your line of credit is down to zero and you're going to pull out your $13,000. Okay. You're going to put that 13,000 onto your, the principal of your mortgage. And you're going to do that over and over and over and over again. Okay. Long story short, you guys, by doing it this way, now over those six months, you've made your normal monthly payments, okay? So remember the, the last quarter, we talked about the monthly payments, those uh, principal payments, right? That brought your total principal owed down to $198,543, right? That was the bank way. After six months of paying, you now owe $198,543, okay? What did we just do? Because we're taking 13,000 from the line of credit and putting that toward the principal of the mortgage, we're going 198 minus 13, all of a sudden, we now only owe $185,543 on our mortgage. And we know we'll be able to pay that back in about five, six months at the most. Here we did it in about four, right? So five, five months tops, you're all of a sudden paying off your credit card again, your line of credit again, putting 13,000 on your mortgage and just doing that over and over and over and over. Now, just this first six months, let's just, let's just talk about this first, you know, five, six months. Okay. Had we done this, the traditional route, do you know when we would have been down to $185,543 on the actual principal of the mortgage? When would we have actually hit this? Had we done things the traditional bank way, had we done things the way that the bank wanted us to do it, when would we have actually been at that number? Four years and seven months later. And in that time, we would have paid $43,457 in interest charges. Instead, total, we ended up paying $5,503 in interest. And that's including the $536 that we spent on our line of credit. That's it. Okay, we just removed almost $40,000 in interest and knocked over four years off of our mortgage in four, five, six months, tops. And all we did was just rerouted what account our paychecks were being put into. And we're gonna do that again and again and again and again. And guess what? You keep doing this and you will have paid off your mortgage in about five years. You'll have paid off your car loan and you'll have paid off your credit card. You will be debt free in about five, five and a half years. How crazy is that?